Welcome to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. I'm the Register of Deeds of Plymouth County. Uh, a headline for the month is early indications suggest a busy spring market. What we're reporting on today at this February show of the Registers Report are the January numbers, uh, recordings at the Registry of Deeds. And we are the county recording agency for anything related to real estate. Deeds, mortgages, many of the documents that get recorded in the chain of title. Uh, so for January, there were 637 deeds recorded compared to 927 in December, 25% uh, higher than last January. And I think that shows that the trend in real estate is continuing. Uh, through 2015, we had an increase over 2014, certainly by deeds and also by mortgages. There were 1,412 mortgages recorded in January, less than the 1,845 in December, but up 9% compared to the 1,299 last January. Last year in mortgages, we had a 25% increase over the year before. Certainly people were using mortgages not only for purchase mortgages, but for refinancing to save their costs. The next document you're going to see is an image of foreclosure deeds. Foreclosure deeds is still a troublesome uh, issue within the Plymouth County community. There were 52 foreclosure deeds in January, less than the 62 in December, but 33% higher than last January. Over the course of 2015, the number of foreclosure deeds were 42% higher than 2014. Uh, the larger lenders are clearing out their files. People that have been in limbo for a long time are now facing foreclosure notices, which is the next document I'm showing. There were 154 foreclosure notices recorded in January, up from the 103 last um, year in December, and 95% higher than last January. Many lenders, as I said, are getting caught up with homes that were delinquent for a long time. Um, and as you see in the next document, it's an image of foreclosure deeds and notices showing the towns. Uh, Brockton, Plymouth, and Wayham have been the highest communities beset by foreclosure deeds and notices. We'll continue to track that information. A couple quick things. Um, our training room at the Registry of Deeds is uh, next scheduled to be open on Thursday, March 3rd. We've had great um, responses to our online training sessions at the Registry of Deeds. Uh, the last few, we've had full houses, so call in advance. Call 508-830-9290, and uh, March 3rd from 9 to noon, is a very good online training course. You can work that a lot more efficiently, both for people in the business as well as municipal employees. Our office hours are next being held in Pembroke on uh, February 9th. We held office hours in Hanson. Uh, last month, we, we try to get around to the communities, particularly those that are not uh, represented by satellite offices, our main offices in Plymouth. We have a satellite office in Brockton and Rockland. And I have a great guest coming up in the next segment, Donna Frano, who is the new president of PASS and a realtor. We'll be discussing the reasons to be a home buyer. So we'll see you in the next segment. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But I get it, you're busy. And busy people can't have prediabetes. Uh, I read that wrong. They can, okay. Just go to the site. Welcome back to the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. This show is about Plymouth County real estate. And in this segment of the show, we always try to do something educational in nature. Uh, we've had surveyors, we've had closing attorneys, everyone involved in the real estate community. And I have a great guest today, Donna Frano, 
Donna, welcome to the show. Thank you very much, John. Thank you for having me. And I want to congratulate you on your new title. And you are president of? I am president of the Plymouth and South Shore Association of Realtors. And can you tell our viewers what that organization does? Happy to do that. Does? We are the second large, largest trade group in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts for realtors, Greater Boston being the first. We are a, in concert with the National Association of Realtors as well as the Massachusetts Association of Realtors. And we are a trade association of realtors. Not every real estate agent is a realtor. Realtors are held to a higher, higher code of ethics. Um, and that is something that we take very seriously. Yeah, I know it's a great organization and you work with your members in educational purposes, prof professionalism, and collegiality? Absolutely. So we're always working together. We do a lot of networking events. We do a lot of community service events. Education is really, really important. Um, technology, code of ethics, um, other issues, septic, you know, uh, environmental issues, other issues related to real estate is something that we're providing to our members so that they're always have top-notch education for their sellers and their buyers. I thought it would be helpful if, uh, first of all, you can tell our viewers how you got into the real estate business. Sure, happy to do so. I ended up in real estate actually because of my daughter who um, wanted to play hockey and wanted to play hockey for a local high school that um, did not have a bus that would take her to the hockey rink. And she's a goalie, so her equipment is very large. So. The deal was that her mother would have to drive her every day. And I was working happily in corporate America and having a great time, but corporate America doesn't always dovetail so well with the needs of your hockey playing daughter. So, you know, I tried to work out something with corporate America, it didn't quite come together. And I had a friend who was in real estate, a neighbor actually, and she said, Oh, you'd be great in real estate. And um, I said, Oh, okay, well, let's do it. Um, and it, it's been a great, great career for me, and it's, affor it's certainly afforded me to take her to hockey practice all the time, um, but it was one of the best decisions I ever made. So how long have you been a realtor? I've been a realtor since 2004. Great, great. And uh, you're also, uh, do you want to describe your real estate contacts? So sure, people can absolutely. So I live in Pembroke, but yeah. I'm actually the sales manager for the Jack Conway Hanover office. Okay. So as the sales manager, I'm responsible for 36 agents out of the office. So while I certainly do list and sell for um, you know, people that I know, uh, most of my work is spent um, leading my team, training, making sure that, the, um, you know, that there's paper in the printer and ink and everything is functioning. And what is your contact information? Oh, sure. My contact, my cell phone is 781-249-1719, and my office number is 781-826-3131. You can always reach me on my email, which is dfrano at jackconway.com. So let's talk about your new role as, as president yes. of, of PASS, Plymouth and South Shore Realtors. And uh, you were recently elected. I was indeed. And is it, one, is it a one-year term? It is a one-year term. Okay. Um, but um, you know, uh, you know, going up through leadership, sure. you know, because first you're president-elect. So there is sort of a training mentorship process that happens. Um, so you sort of, you know, you're not just thrown into it. You know exactly what's going to happen during your one-year term. And then you stay on an additional year as a past president, sort of to help and to guide the president of that year should he or she need you. Um, but it, it's, it's really an honor to be the president of the organization. Well, that's great. Um, my last guest on the show last month is a fellow by the name of Tony Baldwin, who's a realtor, mm -hmm. and is the new president of the Plymouth Chamber of Commerce. Ah. So I think it's great that the realtor community you know, gets involved in its own organization Absolutely. as well as in the communities. I, I think that realtors are in every segment of volunteering activity. While I do this as a volunteer activity, there's a couple of other things that I do as volunteers as well, because I think volunteering is so important to, to be out in the community, to get to know people. Heck, it's good for business too. So let's talk about PASS. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll shorten it to PASS. Okay. And, and talk about the things that PASS does um, as a uh, organization to help its members. Sure. 
So uh, we are a, a member-driven organization, and every day our staff, because um, we, we do have staff, we have five full-time staff members, um, they get up every day and think about how we can improve our services to our members. We have about 2,800 members, so we're a fairly large organization uh, within the realtor family. So, you know, things that we do include uh, continuing education, um, networking events, community service, um, just, you know, a lot of things that bring us together as a community. Um, because when, you know, real estate can be a contentious industry sometimes. And if you're in a network, you know, if you're getting to know people, it really does help your business, I think. Right. Yeah. So if people um, are watching that are realtors and I'm a member of PASS, how would they uh, reach out to PASS? You can find us in the phone book. We're in Pembroke on Route 139, which is Scusett Street. Um, all realtors are licensed real estate professionals, but not all uh, licensed real estate professionals are realtors. So if somebody is out there and they're a real estate agent and they think that they would like to um, see what the realtor brand can offer, we would welcome that conversation warmly. Great, great. So one of the things I, I wanted to talk about is um, the uh, current uh, issue that Home ownership is uh, dropping mm. over the last number of years, yeah. and uh, clearly th th there was a, a major problem in 2008 mm -hmm. when a lot of people had a difficulty. Some people took out mortgages they couldn't afford. We talk a lot in my other segments uh, about the foreclosure market sure. and how people can help themselves in that. We track it as a registry deeds and work with nonprofits, but clearly. Uh, the benefits to being a homeowner are uh, um, numerous. And I know that organizations like yours um, are organizations that promote home ownership. Mm -hmm. yeah, so let's talk about that a little sure. bit. So we're promoting sustainable home ownership. We don't want to go through what we went through before. And, and as realtors, it was difficult for us to help and assist a buyer who then ended up in foreclosure. That's not what we want as an organization. We want sustainable home ownership. Um, and we encourage that by education. So, you know, for example, I had a conversation this morning with a gentleman that I know through, an, actually another volunteer activity, and he was saying that his rent was going way up and that he thought that at this particular point he was gonna need to find a new rental. And I said to him, I, you know, I asked his age, and he was in his early 30s, and I said, you know, what about maybe talking to somebody about purchasing a home? He says, oh, I couldn't possibly, I couldn't possibly do that. I said, well, what do you think you could pay? And he said, I said, well, you know, you might not be buying the Taj Mahal today, but I think that you probably could get into a small condo, which is going to allow him to have some stability. You know, the great thing about home ownership is that you know what your monthly payment is going to be. You, you know, we, the best thing for you is to have a nice 30-year fixed rate and uh, know what it is you're going to, what you're getting into. You know, not everybody, by the way, should own a home. You know, I think if you are, if you have money down and you have a stable job and you're staying around for a while, though, I think it makes great sense. Um, you know, I'm the uh, mother of a 24-year-old and a 26-year-old, so, you know, one of the, I, I see them, um, and, and, I, and I know that they're a little reluctant to sort of move forward, because it seems like such a big, overwhelming decision. Um, also, student loan debt. And so student debt is really something that I think is uh, impacting, in a negative way, the real estate market. As a mother of a 24 and a 26-year-old, it's something really that resonates with me because I know, you know, they're they're in my home, their friends are in my home, and I know that, and, and they in turn are still living with their parents, so they're not creating um, households, um, and the student loan debt is, you know, in some cases six, seven, eight hundred dollars additional, in um, in payments that they have to make every month, which limits their ability to get a mortgage. So that's something I think that hopefully our government will be able to resolve. Yes, I, I, I do think um, student debt is going to delay some of the millennials in, in purchase of a home. 
Um, but I also know that as they get settled, um, there's a lot of um, tremendous programs out there for mass housing. There is, you're right. Relative to the down payment issue, which that's is also a, a burden to people getting into absolutely. housing for the first time. And that's what's great about realtors. Realtors know about those gift programs. They know about that ma those mass housing programs. Right. So if a, if a millennial starts a conversation with a realtor, even if they're a year or two in advance of, of thinking about a home purchase, at least they can get some advice from a realtor about some of those gift programs that are out there. Yeah, and certainly, you know, a lot of um, younger, uh, immediately post-student, uh, college student individuals live in Boston, mm -hmm. and the uh, rental <laughs> prices in Boston are going through the roof. It's crazy. And certainly for a period of time, you want to be with your friends and be near everything in Boston. Absolutely. But um, then economic uh, issues come in, and uh, the housing prices in Boston have gone up as high as the rental prices, and people will look to come to Plymouth County in places mm -hmm. that are more affordable. Absolutely. And they'll, they'll be looking at the programs that can help them get in, yeah. into those homes. I think, too, that they look at uh, transit. I think, yeah. I think young millennials look at transit because they want to be able just to hop on a train. They've, in many cases, experienced that sort of urban lifestyle. You know, and I do see that they look uh, for, in particular, the commuter rail and that, that if they can get to a commuter rail and they can get into Boston quickly, either for work or for play, whatever the case is, that they're attracted to that. So let's talk about uh, those people. Um, let's say 25 to 34, mm -hmm. um, out of uh, college or postgraduate studies, um, working, probably renting for a period of time, mm -hmm and then um, looking to make a decision. Maybe they get married. Maybe they want to come back to um, a place that they can call their own. Mm -hmm. uh, what should they be doing to prepare themselves? Sure. I think, I think they should reach out to a realtor first and foremost, who is going to be able to, to give them some advice about how to prepare. So perhaps as well have a conversation with a lender. You know, Obviously, you've got to get some ducks in a row, and you've got to make some decisions about curbing your Starbucks coffee consumption. You know, some of us call it the Starbucks effect. And I, had, I said this once to a niece of mine, you don't want it bad enough because you're not willing to give up Starbucks. You gotta save some money. You gotta, you gotta curb some of those impulse purchases. So I do think having a conversation with a realtor about what's really involved. Mm -hmm. You know, there's wants and there's needs. You need a roof, you need a good heating system, you need, you know, clean water, you know, you're going to be able to live without having a garage for a while or, you know, walk-in closets or granite or, you know, air conditioning, central air or something along those lines. So, you know, I, I, unfortunately, I think that uh, real estate has become sort of glamorized by HGTV and some of these other media portals where it just looks like it's so glamorous and everybody moves into this so stunning easy. home and it's wonderful. <laughs> and it's not. I mean, yeah. you've got to start. And sometimes, you know, I, I, one of my favorite stories is a young couple that were s referred to me by another young couple that I had sold a house to and they were really organized and ready and young. They were 25. They, I thought they were like the future of America. I had great hope for us. Um, and they had a. They wanted to live in Bryantree or Weymouth, and they had. They were willing to to um, maybe think about a fixer upper. They had some skills, and and they ended up with new construction condo in Hanson, because sometimes you just are overwhelmed by something that a house will need, and what you think of is a fixer upper really is very much cosmetics. And, but by doing that, they established great credit. Great credit. They're happy. They love where they're living. They're Developed near a community. Some equity, rail. I hope. Absolutely. Okay, good. Absolutely. They love the community. It was everything. Right. You know, there is a, I happen to believe that there's a certain real estate karma, right? They ended up where they were supposed to be. Yeah. They're happy. So, um, PASS um, works with its members to share this kind of information that they share with the public? Absolutely. So there's always information that's being provided to the membership vis-a-vis uh, -vis, um, a newsletter, emails, our Facebook page, all sorts of um, methods of communication as to what's available out there so that our membership is well-educated. 
um, on the uh, comings and goings of our industry, and they in turn can share that information with their buyers and their sellers too. We work with sellers sometimes too, so with both buyers and sellers. And do you want to share the contact information for PASS again? Sure. So um, PASS is uh, www.passrealtors.com. .com. Yes, indeed. And uh, that would be for realtors or people in the business that want to get connected with PASS. Absolutely. And try to figure out what you do. Absolutely. So connect. while we're, you know, Plymouth and South Shore, we have members from Boston. We have members from Norwood, members from the Cape. You know, sometimes we are providing benefits that are very attractive, or we, you know, events that are very attractive to members that are sort of outside of what you might consider Plymouth County. Everybody's welcome. You've just got to be willing to be a realtor. So we have a couple minutes left. Good. Let's talk about where we're going um, in 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, this is being taped in uh, February. Mm -hmm. uh, not exactly the high uh, season for real estate, no. but it's a good time for people to prepare. It is. The real estate market um, is probably about two weeks away from the spring market, if you will. So it's a perfect time. Sellers should be thinking about how to, what they need to do to get their house ready. Um, there is a serious lack of inventory on the market. And by that, I mean about 24% off. So buyers are coming, and there are buyers out there. We talk about the millennials and so forth, but there are buyers who are out there desperately looking for that next home and they just aren't finding that inventory. And I think sellers perhaps are a little concerned that they don't have the equity that they might have. They should speak with a realtor to find out. A realtor can provide that information as to what the house um, is, uh, will probably fetch on the open market. Um, but for 2016, I think the activity is going to be very good. I think buyers are coming into the marketplace. We need to get some sellers to finally, you know, get with the program and list their house. Um, mortgage rates, you know, we had a couple of uh, weeks ago, rates were going to bump up, and they really didn't. Um, it was, when I looked most recently, it was 3.74. That's still historically very, very good interest rate. Um, so that has um, not really been a problem. We worried about that for a while, but that has not really been a problem. So I do think 2016 is going to be a good year. Well, I want to thank you for coming on the show. My um, pleasure. Good luck in your, with your realtor hat, and I think you're going to be a great president of PASS. And I know it's a great organization, and we certainly look forward to working with the organization for years to come, and thank you for coming on My the show. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Right. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. If you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. Welcome back to the Registers Report. My guest in this show, Donna Frano, did a great job discussing her organization, PASS, uh, Plymouth County's largest realtor group, as well as her role as a realtor. Some great information and reasons to be a home buyer, particularly as we uh, get ready to make the shift into the spring market. In this segment of the show, we always try to do something lighter in nature talk about some of our Plymouth County history. The month of February, which is a le in the, a leap year this year, 29 days, has uh, President's Day and Valentine's Day. A couple of our notable land records. You're going to see a, an image of Samuel Lincoln. Samuel Lincoln uh, lived in the town of Hingham. He uh, was a... Uh, distant uh, relative of Abraham Lincoln, a great, great uh, grandfather. There's a great uh, and wonderful statue in uh, downtown Hingham of Abraham Lincoln. Uh, it, they do a really nice program every year at the old ship church. 
in honor of uh, Abe Lincoln's birthday uh, coming up very, very soon. And certainly, um, President's Day celebrates not only Abraham Lincoln, but all of American presidents. But Abraham Lincoln is certainly one of our greatest presidents who led our country through a time of crisis. The next image you're going to see is of Edgar Rose Snow, Edward Rose Snow. Edward Rose Snow was a very famous author. He wrote a, a lot of books about lighthouses and shipwrecks in the Boston Harbor Islands. There's a really uh, interesting um, thing going on in Plymouth County this month. It's called the Snow Row in Hull uh, on February 27th. A, a number of individuals in kayaks and curras and rowboats participate in a contest that they row out into Boston Harbor. And it's a race uh, named after Mr. Snow and a really fun thing to watch if you ever have, have a chance to get there. Again, it's on the 27th of February, out uh, right near Hull Gut, and um, really uh, interesting uh, to watch. Uh, in last, uh, the last image from our notable record, record collection is a new one, Minot's Ledge Light. It's a lighthouse that was recently sold by the United States government to private ownership. Uh, it's called officially Minot's Ledge Light, but its nickname is the I Love You Light because of its unique flashes. It flashes one, four, three, I Love You uh, recognition, and is a uh, great and very unique location in Plymouth County, uh, now in private ownership. So I want to thank Dave Antoine and Eric Christensen for their help in putting this show together with PAC TV. Uh, I share this information uh, throughout Plymouth County and this particular show in the PAC TV area about Plymouth County real estate, opportunities for people to uh, be trained in how to use our system, and uh, the great information that Donna Frano brought with us today uh, to share. Um, information about the Plymouth County real estate market. So thank you again to PAC, and I'll see you next month.